What's up guys, Cameron Foose back here again with FooseAlerts.com. Today's video lesson is gonna give you a little bit more details about how to day trade and swing trade the breakout. Right, guys y'all hear me over here you see me good deal let's get this started so let's just get down to the nitty gritty I'm just gonna teach you guys a little bit about the basics of a breakout and one kind of pattern that I've been trading for almost 11 years of which I call a revival pattern so let's just get into a little bit more about the anatomy of what a breakout is and how they form and what's kind of the concept behind it so breakouts or breakdowns these are all uh, formed up by the theory of support and resistance. So just for example, let's take a look at resistance here. This is just a simple slide from uh, one of the training programs that I offer. So resistance is basically in theory, an area where there's more sellers than buyers. So just for example, you can see the stock say was continuing to come up towards a level at $6 per share and it continued to pull back down after it would rise up into that level. So basically the supply and the demand there was more sellers at that $6 mark than there were buyers. So people continue to start increasing sell pressure once it hit that level and continue to break down or come back down to a uh, support level. A breakout would mean that that finally, usually there's at least two points of resistance formed in a certain area. So you can see we have an example here reached six dollars per share twice before finally breaking out to the upside so once you have an area where you can draw some sort of trend line that means you have an area of resistance that you can draw for a trend line um, and actually have uh, price to break out above so that's just a very simple concept of a breakout over a resistance level it's the same exact thing on support if there's two areas of resist or support that you can draw a trend line to or an area so this example it reached five dollars basically the demand for buyers was higher than there was for sellers so usually when it gets if a stock gets down to a support level there becomes more buyers than sellers and that's usually when a stock goes to the upside but if it breaks down that level that gives it kind of the signal that it might be continuing in that opposite direction. So that's just kind of the, uh, you know, a short description of the analogy of support and resistance and breakouts and breakdowns. So let's talk about how do we can how we can utilize that in our trading. So this right here, as you can see on REN, is a revival pattern. Basically, what a revival pattern in revival pattern is. You can see here we're looking at the daily chart here on the right. Let's make this actually a little bit bigger for y'all. REN, this is a stock that we just recently traded. So REN is in what I call a revival pattern. A revival pattern is basically a stock that is, or, or has a lead in trend that is bearish. It's a stock that's been trending to the downside and we're basically looking for it to revive itself. That's why I call it a revival uh, and see a breakout to the upside. And typically that occurs when it finally starts forming a base and you can actually draw a triangle breakout pattern so this is basically a lead in trend is bearish the stocks has been completely beaten down you usually see some sort of volume increase as you can see here up here the volume was pretty dry once we finally started seeing this break down uh, in the trend and start forming up a new base that's kind of the indication of okay maybe this is forming up a revival breakout pattern and as you can see Due to our theory of support and resistance, this had continued to peak out up towards $2 several times. Uh, as well, you gotta understand that whole numbers are big key resistance and support areas in trading stocks. So now we have an area to kind of draw a trend line to potentially buy into a stock. So once that triggered over $2, that was kind of the indication, okay, maybe this thing's actually reviving and breaking out over that resistance level, and we might actually see a multi-day run, or uh, what also happens a lot of the times as well is it could be a false breakout. And let's look at exactly what happened here on REN going forward. It was a false breakout. So that's where managing risk comes in, guys. Like I always say, I'm literally only right on 52% of my trades. 
I'm able to make money in the stock market because I take my uh, losses very quickly and don't allow those small losses to turn into big losses. And the only way people lose money in the stock market is allowing a little loss become a very, very big loss. And that's how people blow up their accounts. So it's very important that you understand that if the stock doesn't go in your favor, if it's a false breakout or a false pattern that you're looking to trade, if it doesn't work out, you have to move on to the trade. You can always rebuy that stock and trade it for a secondary uh, pattern if it forms back up. And that's exactly what we just executed on REN. Uh, you know, I did not trade it this first round, but we did trade it for a second round breakout. So this basically came back, you know, still forming up this revival pattern uh, as we were just looking at here on the revival. Uh, or I haven't shown you this one yet. This is basically just an illustration of a revival. The lead-in trend is bearish, followed up by a three-phase triangle breakout pattern that you can see here, and you trade it to the upside. If it's a false breakout, you get out, and you can wait for it to see a secondary breakout, or you move on to another pattern that you're trying to look for. So Ren was a perfect example of a secondary run here on the breakout. I actually got long 10,000 shares. Right, boom. So right here, I got back in on REN, I believe about 203 on REN. Uh, I'll show you the screenshot here of uh, the video of me, the actual uh, profit that I have here. I had a $1,400 gain on REN, and I actually traded this, you know, uh, not as well as I could have. I sold way early, so I was, you know, looking to see if it was gonna break out, but I sold right up towards these previous resistance, resistance levels. Uh, like I was just saying in the, um, uh, you know the theory of support and resistance. It's an area where you're probably going to see more uh, sellers than buyers. So once this started getting up into this previous resistance area, about 214, you know I got a little hesitant. I had a uh, 10 or 15 thousand shares of this. I had a 1400 dollar gain. Uh, I took my profit because you don't know what any stock is going to do. And then after I sold, this ripped all the way up to 250 in the same session for about a 25 percent gain on that day. But as you can see. This is a perfect revival breakout pattern. The lead-in trend is bearish. It formed up resistance areas that you're, uh, you have the ability to draw trend lines, kind of a clear breakout area. It did break out. I traded it to the upside, took a piece of the pie. And that's really what trading breakouts is, is you have no idea how high that stock is gonna go after that breakout, or if it even is gonna go about after that breakout. Your only goal is to lock in some profits so you can take at least a little piece of the pie. There's no predicting the stock market. All you can do is react to price action and manage the risk along the way. So that was just a great example of trading a perfect uh, breakout on RENN for a revival pattern. Another one that we traded today was CPRX. So let's take a look at this. This one's more so, wasn't the cleanest looking breakout, but what I was looking at here was kind of the same kind of pattern on this, which was a revival pattern get a little more clear here on the actual chart so you can see the same thing here lead-in trend is bearish it starts to form up kind of a base with an area of resistance right around uh, 135 or so uh, where it continued to peak up and continued to spike up into 135 so that was an area of resistance when a stock moves over that area of resistance that's kind of the indication of it actually breaking out to the upside and you might see some more moves to the upside on that stock so i actually used uh both intraday as well as daily charts and that's what i teach you in both foos four and foos four part two my 15 hour online training course is how to utilize daily charts as well as intraday charts more so on intraday to try to pinpoint your entries but also looking at the longer term picture of knowing that this is an, an actual strong breakout chart on the daily uh, <clears throat> in the original Foos Force. So we actually got here long on CPRX in a pattern which I call an F1. This is basically just a morning breakout flag pattern and I'll show you an example of this of when they don't work out as well. So I got in long at 130, uh, 10,000 shares. I believe it was maybe 15,000. I never know how many shares I buy of these stocks anymore because I trade so many stocks. I believe it was 10,000 here at a 131 here on CPRX. I got out pretty quickly at about 140 and then sold again at 140. 
uh, on CPRS, and I made a hot trade there very, very quickly. And then moving along here, going forward, basically what we look for is new breakout patterns or breakouts above, uh, on this example, was above the VMA and the 13 EMA. The 13 EMA and the VWAP, or what I would meant to say VWAP, not VMA, are basically two short-term indicators that I use to kind of identify short-term trends, both on the daily chart or on the intraday chart. It really doesn't matter which time frame you're using. It's just basically a, a great trend to follow on a short-term basis to kind of understand uh, what the short-term you know, bias is in the stock, uh, just based on the 13 EMA. So I actually got long again here at 140. All of a sudden I was up to 150. I had 10,000 shares. I was up another thousand dollars. But quickly, this turned into a fake out breakout. So once these things, you know, I got in early, I was trying to anticipate a move over that resistance level. Uh, unfortunately, you know, this was a strong resistance level. Uh, like I said before, uh, when you're looking at the theory of resist support and resistance, you know, there was an established resistance here at about 147, which means there's more sellers there than buyers, but it's not gonna work out perfectly every time. The stock market is completely different every day. All you can do is kind of use theoretical ideas uh, on trading and manage the risk behind it. So same thing that happened here, CPRX came back up, reestablished that resistance level, almost looked like it was breaking out. At that point, I was up, uh, over a thousand dollars on this second trade um, on CPRX, but soon, quickly, it just came completely back down. I sold again at 141, uh, basically for about even on that uh, trade for CPRX. But you can see, same exact concept here. Uh, when there's an established resistance area, there's more sellers in that area uh, than buyers. But sometimes you want to see that breakout to the upside because you're trying to trade that breakout. Uh, but it doesn't always work that way. So you have to manage the risk and not allow yourself to get into sticky situations. Uh, but moving forward, CPRX came back again to that level. Same exact concept here uh, that we're looking on uh, CPRX, but this way on the breakout side. So there was established resistance here, as we can see on this illustration on CPRX. This did have the breakout over that 147 mark. And I got long again, CPRX at uh, 146 for 15,000 shares, 146 right here. And I sold quickly afterwards, uh, right around 155, 154, 153. So I made about another thousand bucks there really, really quickly on CPRX for a total of $2,092.89. I'll show you guys um, the screenshot on the video of it right now so you can see this is actually real trades going on uh, on all of these trades so that was another great revival pattern breakout on CPRX so let's take a look at some of the other uh, trades that I showed you there of my losses let's take a look at ORIG this actually had a nice little continuation today but this was a similar revival pattern breakup that I was trying to trade. So same thing here, this thing actually had a gap down. We've had a lot of gap downs in the biotech industry as of late. So this had a revival pattern forming up. Same thing, intraday or daily trend here is bearish, coming down into forming up a base level where we can actually kind of form up a triangle breakout pattern on ORIG. <clears throat> so I try to get in here at about, uh, I believe it was 91, 90 cents or so. Uh, around 89 cents or 89 this was yesterday's trade so I don't see what my actual executions were um, on ORIG but as you can see this only spiked up for a brief period of time before actually having this huge red candle so I had to manage the risk there but I did lose seven hundred and eight dollars or seven hundred six dollars I can't even read uh, what it says there let's take a look back at the intraday chart so this was another similar morning flag pattern breakout on ORIG. Uh, it had a gap open. I got in at about 91 cents for that morning F1 breakout pattern on the intraday chart. So I was using the daily chart. We had a hot chart on the daily plus the intra chart, intraday chart breaking out here at 91 cents. So that's me combining both multiple time frames to find kind of a double whammy uh, breakout pattern 
right there at 91. Unfortunately, it did not work, so I had to cut my losses here. Next thing you know, look at this thing. This was also a very, you know, much more risky stock, being that it's a penny stock, it's under a buck, so there's, you know, less volume, a lot more volatile. You can see this thing drop from 91 to 88 cents in just one big 100,000 uh, share sell-off there. So it's a little bit more risky, and you have to be careful about these. So I sold out for about $708 loss here on ORIG. It had a failed breakout here, and a lot of times, once it turns into a failed breakout, you're going to see it continued selling because it's kind of just return re, uh, or reverse the momentum on that stock, and went from that you know resistance level, again looking at established resistance. Effort. Looking at established resistance, if it doesn't break out, it continues to drop there. So that's the same thing that happened here on ORIG. It failed that resistance level to break out and then continue to turn down here. But it actually had a nice day today. This is the actually opening, so it gapped up. So I could still trade this breakout again, just like Ren, how it had that fake out initially at two bucks. It had a secondary breakout that I did trade and made a nice run. So you don't always know exactly what it's going to do, but the best thing you can do is manage the risk, not wait to see and hold on to it because it might not ever break out again. It might continue to drop and go down to 50 cents. You don't know. That's why you have to manage the risk and cut those losses very short. Um, same thing with BAS here today. <laughs> this was a similar breakout pattern. We're also in a potential revival. I was hoping to see you know a breakout of this flag upwards of one dollar per share. Unfortunately, you can see same thing here. This is a reversal. I got in here at about 85, 86 cents, or uh, hoping to see this breakout of this intraday chart. But once it fails that breakout, that's an indication of a potential reversal off that resistance level, and this thing kind of came back down. And then today into the close, somehow uh, just a massive amount of sellers. I'm not sure exactly what happened. Oil today, I believe we did have oil numbers, but oil actually held up pretty well, two and a half percent. So uh, BAS, you know, this is a crap little penny stock. Um, so not surprised to see this thing pull all the way back. Another stock, GoPro. This is my trade of the year. I mean, who knows? I just really like their uh, product line that they have coming out with the GoPro Karma as well as the handheld stabilizer. I think it's a great concept to have it all in one package. But I'm still long from $14 per share on GoPro. Uh, it's now at 17. It is in a revival pattern. It's a little more choppy because it's a, a larger cap stock. So it's not the cleanest quick breakout. I'm in for a swing trade on this. But same exact pattern here on GoPro down into this huge uh, lead in bearish trend followed by a base pattern followed by breaking out of kind of a resistance level I'm in at 14 bucks but anyways guys that is how I day trade and swing trade the revival pattern breakout anyways guys if you want to learn more about what we do on a day-to-day -day basis as day traders head to foostlords.com or check out the links below we offer several different training programs with the foos4 training system from our 15-hour online training course to the brand new foos4 academy which is a 40-hour mentorship program which is a little bit more in-depth and advanced experience anyways guys that's it for today's video lesson foostlords is out yo dog if you'll be over trading I'm gonna mess you up.